Hi everyone, so season 3 has been out for a few days now and I want to take some more time to talk about the theme, about my impressions and what I think could and should change with this theme. There has already been like a really uh, good video by Rax, so I want to just highlight that real quick. Um, he made this State of Diablo 4 in season 3 video, talking a lot about the theme and some other things. Very good video, so I recommend you guys to go check it out. It goes a bit more in detail on a few things and uh, you know, covers a larger range of topics. Um, but in general, it's not really looking great for <laughs> Season 3, I gotta say. And personally, I'm also not very impressed. So I already uploaded um, my clip the other day on like day one when I was racing, where I just like rambled about uh, the Season theme and what I don't like. So uh, a lot of people have seen that. And in general, though, it seems like the consensus is it's bad so here's like another twitter post from mathel who has been blasting the four a little bit and he put this together from reddit so yeah everyone seems to like hate it or at very least people say that they don't like it but there is some light at the end of the tunnel so here like yesterday or so uh, george haley wrote on twitter that uh, they are looking at the feedback especially from like the people that played a lot and more details soon there might be some changes and also Joe, Joe Papiora uh, wrote another tweet somewhere that they are looking at things and maybe very soon we're gonna get some blog posts or some updates. I just want to go over like the problems that I have with the theme and that I see also for like other players and maybe give some proposed solutions that doesn't have to be like the you know the solution that you know covers everything or well, I don't I'm not saying that this is necessarily like the perfect solution but I think a few things that could change that would help here and let's see what will happen with Blizzard. So the number one problem I think with the season theme is that most people don't really feel like it's very impactful. So you can see this here for example compared to season one with the Million Hearts they were very powerful especially the Barbara being like the shining star but in general the, the, the hearts were pretty good and also in season two we had the vampiric powers you start the vampiric powers you get you know healing from undying right at level one uh, you get stuff like hemomancy that can kind of one tap the entire screen once in a while at least like the small monsters and there was a lot of really cool stuff there like metamorphosis and you know the extra attack speed and all that and it was like you know a, a pure boost to character and player power and now we have this construct here our little friend um yeah, that is kind of just like lacking in all regards. So uh, Blizzard has said, uh, you know, that they, they would be you know, relevant, they would be scaling with your character, they, you know, they would feel good basically. But none of that is really happening. So I've been playing this theme now and I've been grinding a lot of these walls trying to boost my constructs, which first of all seems, <laughs> yeah, this is a whole other topic. But um, even even when you have you know, some of the stones that you actually want to use, you need to rank them up 10 times and maybe somewhere like halfway along the way they actually start doing something so for example i have the breaking support here so this one gives you a 10 percent chance to make an enemy vulnerable for two seconds 10 percent chance yeah for two seconds so if i in any way rely on vulnerable on for my construct i will just never have this effect you know it's gonna be up like you know <laughs> five percent of the time if my guy ever gets hit anything so I'm not even talking about the AI of this thing that is just like kind of like slow and this guy's like dragging behind and not really attacking the stuff I'm attacking and then okay I'm I'm kind of rushing you know really fast through those dungeons I can understand that at that pace my companion is not really able to do that much because I'm destroying everything but if I ever want to actually have this companion do something like on the boss or I find a butcher or something like that I want him to actually help me and he doesn't. Yeah, this thing is level one and does nothing basically. I just have it here for like the odd chance that there is like a, a barrier mod or something, and maybe this thing actually gets to hit something. But one of the main issues that I see here is that you don't have an immediate impact from the season theme. So you start out level one, you have a few stones, but all of them just kind of scale linearly. You see this here, it starts at 10, it goes to 20, 30, 40, etc rank by rank up to rank 10 and in rank 10 this is actually really good then you have a hundred percent chance to get vulnerable and this is actually sick and you know even if it's like rank six you know 60 percent chance or so would be fine but starting out at rank one with 10 percent and then rank two 20 percent it's just useless and a lot of stones have kind of like a similar problem here like safeguard support look at that 
it has also the same linear scaling. It goes 1.5% damage reduction after using the skill for three seconds. And then it goes to three and then it goes to four and a half and so on um, up until 15% at max rank. And that is just, yeah, at, at max rank, it's okay. But no one is ever going to get there because of the grind being like so insanely long. You do literally like hundreds of vaults to actually get anywhere close to those ranks because you can't target farm those supports. And well, right now, at least in my opinion, the meta is you just ignore the traps entirely and you rush through the vaults trying to get those pearls of warding because those are insanely valuable to farm Malphas. You need 10 of those pearls to even open the dungeon for Malphas, which is down here in the gate hall. So this thing. And there you can get those um, unique stones. And those are actually also really impactful. And because they are so impactful and don't even have to be leveled up, this is like the one thing you're actually trying to farm. And this means that all your other stones will just progress at a snail's pace. So I think the number one change here could be that all of those stones get uh, rescaled so that they actually do something at level one. Uh, and maybe also the damage gets improved by this pet a little bit. So I'm not sure why, but I cannot feel anything of this pet in terms of DPS. Like I try to use like some support, you know, like extra damage uh, things here. Like there's like some of those dot effects here, like there's like a and bleeding, whatever. There's like attack speed you can give this thing. Uh, I think the only thing that actually does any kind of damage is like the Tempest. So Tempest has like this kind of like infinite chaining potential that, uh, well, so far I've not seen in action, but at least theoretically, uh, it could create some insane, like, you know, hyperscaling on a long boss fight. Well, number one, we don't really have long boss fights in the game. Like, you know, most characters in endgame will basically even just like one tap Duriel or get close to that. And there's no Avatar Z anymore. So this whole, you know, setup is kind of irrelevant. And we don't really want to wait like half a minute or so for this thing to actually start dealing any damage. But outside of that, I think the damage is just like way too low. And even on a barbarian that I expected would be by far the best to scale the damage of his companions, I tried to do some stuff with this thing and I tried to make it like actually put anything uh, like out in terms of DPS. And it was just deplorable. Like it can't even like really kill an outdoor like world monster or something like <laughs> in less than 10 seconds or so. So yeah, I think for many people, this season just feels like an eternal season. Basically, I actually heard comments from people saying that they're just going to play on eternal now. They have all the uber uniques there, they have the builds there and just enjoy the game that way. But I think this is a huge missed um, opportunity here, I think, to give players actually something cool to play with. And maybe some extra stones that would be less reliant on the pet actually doing something and maybe more just as like a buff to the character. So we have a few of those, for example, we have stuff like Flash of Adrenaline, for example, but on the other hand, it's just like a little damage buff and does nothing else. It does nothing cool like Metamorphosis did in season two, for example. People felt Metamorphosis. It felt nice to use, right? But this, you don't even feel it. You just get a little buff. Most of the time, he's going to one-tap everything anyway on the good build. So who really cares? And most of the other buffs are kind of in a similar story here. You get a bit of healing, okay. You get a bit of like a barrier, okay. But, um, you know, there could be like some fun stuff, you know, something that actually gives you like some on-kill effect, you know, like, you know, some, I don't know, like explosions, for example, like the Shadow Imbuement, or, you know, something that gives you like a speed buff that you can actually feel, or I don't know what, right? There could be like some stones. Maybe some of them could be reworked or tweaked, or maybe they could add a few more, like, you know, like another row of four gems that actually have like auras that you know give you some kind of effects so you can just you know use your pet as an aura bot basically if you want to and you know all the other problems aside at least would have something there so those are just some things that i have um, to say about the companion itself it just doesn't really feel impactful like i actually kind of regret spending any time on the season theme i was hoping that it would be you know powerful it would help me and for example uh, when I started the race uh, for World First, um, I could have probably saved like at least half an hour or so on that race by just completely ignoring the season theme altogether and this uh, companion. And I could have gone to honor it even faster. So that was a huge mistake that I regret. <laughs> but well, here we are. Maybe some changes will come and maybe this thing will be better. But then also comes the grind itself. So let's say I actually rank up everything to level 10 and this thing actually does something. Like if you actually rank everything up, it will it will be somewhat noticeable at least. But the 
the way to get there is just so long. You have to do so many vaults. And as I just said earlier, most of the time you actually go through this without any vaulting because those pearls, they don't really come in fast enough. Yes, you can farm them like relatively efficiently uh, in the outdoor content. So if you go to those um, uh, whispers here where you can see uh, the, like the, the season theme stuff, if you go there and you found those Herald of Malphas, uh, you get one pearl and you need 10 of them. So first you have to collect three of those stones. So you have to go to the zone, you collect like, I don't know, six stones or so. You do two heralds that takes you like, let's say five minutes. And then you have to do this four more times or five more times to actually do a single run in Malphas. Yeah. So you have to do like half an hour of preparation farming those pearls to even open a Malphas run. And in the Malphas run, you also want to maybe stack up more warding stacks with the pearls so that you actually can open those chests in a run. And, you know, then you have to do like this whole, like, you know, avoid the traps and all that stuff. So we're talking about maybe like an hour of preparation, just farming pearls outdoors, which is the fastest way to do it, to do one Malphas run. And uh, then you also still have to like go through the whole entire Malphas run, which probably takes like 10 minutes plus as well, even if you're relatively fast. And you have a high chance of like, you know, failing and losing your stacks on the way because it's an insanely large dungeon. So I feel like the rewards are just not really there. Now, I don't know the drop rates. I've not really seen any confirmation of anyone even finding them so far. So I've been asking my chat with like thousands of viewers and uh, I, I don't recall a single person who has said that they actually found one of them. So yeah, okay, I was a bit ahead of the curve now with the race and stuff. But at this point, people are reaching higher levels. People are doing Malphas and it seems like it, these things barely exist. So maybe they are a higher drop rate than I imagine, maybe not. But either way, it seems like an insane grind. Even if there's like a 5% chance to drop, they have to still do on average 40 Malphas to get both of these. And, uh, you know, we're talking about thousands of hours anyway. And that is just a long time to do this. Now, another problem though, is that this can be sped up a lot. Well, it's not exactly a problem, but it's a problem for especially like more solo players or like hardcore players, for example. But each, in general, this is like, this anti solo player um, sentiment that I get here all the time. So we have this problem already with Duriel. Like if you farm Duriel, you do it solo, you do it wrong. You have to group up, you have to, you know, share those mats with other people so you can multiply your effectiveness. And similar, if you go here and you found those heralds uh, and you have multiple people, you can like, summon it once and you have to spend three of those cores and then everyone can kind of like grind this stuff together and uh, you, everyone gets a pearl at the end. So like this, you can kind of like chain back to back to back all these things. It does help to speed us up a bit, but it seems like even in the Malphas dungeon, you can actually go in and uh, just one guy opens it with like 10 pearls and then everyone just runs through together. Similar to how this works with Duriel. So you can like multiply uh, your efficiency. And again, this is like so like, you know, single player unfriendly that um, it makes me sad. But even if the intention was that you go in there with like a full party every single time and you share the mats, I feel like it's still such a long grind, you know, and we're still looking at like, you know, dozens of hours to potentially get those unique stones, I think. And then we're still talking about those normal stones as well that you want to rank up to 10. So you need a lot of experience to rank them up. And uh, I calculated that if you don't use any pearls, you need something like a thousand or so vault runs, maybe more. And, um, well, if you start using pearls, maybe you can cut it down to like a few hundred or so, but you're looking at a lot of vaults. So I think what really needs to happen is that those chests that, um, that you can open with the warding stacks need to be massively buffed and they also need to be self-sustaining. So one thing they could do is, for example, that every time you open one of those chests, you get like a similar amount of pearls of warding back that you invested to actually get the, the warding stacks to open those chests in the first place. Because right now, every time you do one of those vaults, you um, get two of those pearls at the end. And this is basically what I'm farming here. You finish this run, you open the last chest here. And uh, this is basically what I'm doing. So I just collect this, you know, one or two, two tuning stones that drop there. And there's the two pearls of warding that drop from the main chest. And these other chests here, you need to spend the pearls, but you don't get any pearls back. And this means you always have to go back in the outdoor content. You always have to farm the stuff again. But I just want to chain vaults, really. And um, I would like to try to avoid those traps and, you know, actually open those chests and just boost my, my, my companion until it's fully maxed out and then move on with my life and do something else. 
but I can't because I'm just like stuck in this perpetual loop of farming pearls. So I think this could be like a really good solution, just adding more rewards to those chests and uh, just really cutting down on the number of runs you have to do. I think it's fine to do some vaults, you know, kind of slowly trying to get through this and preserve your stacks. And well, if you want to rush through a little bit more, you spend a few more pearls early on, trying to get a few more warning stacks. Or if you like generally have trouble avoiding the traps, for example, there is a solution around that. So by just like spending more stacks and doing it a bit more inefficiently. But I think the fact that I have to do this like, you know, literally hundreds of times is just horrible. So if I have to do like, let's say 20 runs or something, or let's say even 50 runs to like max out my companion, if I do them well and I spend all my pearls and, you know, I, I don't get hit too much by those traps, I think somewhere along those lines would be like an acceptable, acceptable number of runs. But right now the grind is just like 10 times longer than it should be, in my opinion. If you compare this to season two, for example, we had the blood harvest and well, the blood harvest, um, you can you go there for like a few hours, you know, two hours, three hours, whatever. And you were maxed out on all of your character, on your vampire powers, right? Compared to season three, where the grind seems to be like, I don't know, 100 times longer or so. And the best part is that this companion is not even shared with my characters. So even if I get those unique stones and I do rank up my construct, I have to do the same thing again on my other character. So it's just a ridiculous grind, I think. And that is really like what is holding me back the most from enjoying this theme. Now, there could be a lot of other solutions as well, I think. So maybe they could like, you know, tweak some of those maps as well. Like there's always like the same vaults. It's always the same traps in the same spot. So you can kind of learn them, I guess, which is fine. Uh, again, if you don't have to do like that many runs of every single vault, it will be okay to like replay one vault here with this, this, this fire vault, for example, and you learn, you know, how to avoid those fire traps. And then you have like the other vault where you like, avoid these lightning traps and the dart traps or whatever. Um, you know, if there is there's like a bit of like the variety in the vaults and you, you, you can learn which room to avoid in what way and how, how to like play out and play around those traps. I think it would be okay to do each of them like a few times, you know, like you have these different sigils and you go through them. But at some point I just kind of want to be done with them. And I don't want to like, you know, try, try hard farm vaults all day long. I don't get to play like the other content. I don't really get to play Nightmare Dungeons. I don't really, you know, get to like gear up my character the way I want to because I play those vaults all the time. And it just feels kind of bad. So yeah, this is pretty much what I wanted to share here with my video. Uh, there is obviously a lot more points about things that people don't like, and I can understand most of them. I just wanted to focus more on what we can actually expect, especially in the light of some changes coming to the game, and maybe also give you know some more suggestions or some more you know of a some of a perspective to the devs maybe uh, you know going into um, their meetings or going into like you know preparing for those changes. So let's see what will come out of this. I just think that with some tweaks to the grind, with some tweaks to the powers, and with some tweaks to maybe the overall scaling of this pad, it could become a lot better already. And maybe we're going to see some extra stuff like as I described with maybe a few more of those uh, governing stones, some kind of like aura stones or something, you know, if they make like a next category here, for example, that could be a great solution in my opinion. Maybe we're going to add a few things. That would be great. And overall, I guess this is probably how they could salvage the season theme the best way possible. I was already not too impressed with the idea of actually having a pet as a you know, permanent companion for the season, but I figured, okay, I have an open mind, let's just try it out. And I kind of did appreciate the fear crafting and the idea behind it. Like, you know, you have these different supports, you can mix and match them and stuff. Um, turns out it's just kind of like irrelevant in the end. So this kind of makes me sad because I felt like, you know, giving us an extra progression tool, an extra like theory crafting, you know, avenue, basically, that was actually kind of interesting, but it seems like everything just doesn't matter. And um, yeah, that's kind of sad. And on the other hand, I'm also in the pool of people, like I actually just like not having followers in Diablo 4, I gotta say. So I'm very glad that Diablo 4 launched without a follower system. I understand, you know, a lot of people like the Diablo 2 followers, a lot of people like the Diablo 3 followers, and well, I have played a lot of Diablo 3, I had to deal with the follower, but I think the game is just better without a follower, if you ask me. And even if we get, you know, like stuff like customization of this degree, and let's say that um, all of these options are actually good, and you know, there is actually a reason to use any of them. Um, I don't know, I feel like 
the whole theme of Diablo 4 fits much better with just you being alone instead of having a follow-on. But okay. In any case, that's my feedback video for now. So let's see what comes out of it. I'm going to keep you guys updated if there's a patch and with more stuff going on in the season. So I have almost my second character to level 100 now. I'm going to be preparing, you know, builds. I'm going to be preparing for the gauntlet. I'm going to try to, you know, be the number one in the leaderboards. Let's see how that will go. So maybe going to hear something about this very soon as well and hopefully get it very soon. So that's it for this video. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any other cool ideas or, uh, you know, problems that I didn't talk about now or whatever. So I think anything helps for the desk right now just to like gather more feedback, get more ideas, and hopefully they make something out of it. Hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys next time.